Hi, I'm Mike Bloom, and this is part four of a series of Bible discussions concerning Bible prophecy. And at this video, I want to discuss the issue of certain scriptures referring to the coming of Jesus that are not referring to his coming in our future. Yes, he is going to come in our future. He's going to come, the resurrection of the church is going to occur, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the clouds, according to 1 Thessalonians 4. But that is not the coming that is mentioned in other scriptures in the New Testament. Other scriptures in the New Testament refer to his coming in destruction against Israel and Jerusalem in A.D. 70. He used the Roman army as a tool of his anger and judgment, just as in Isaiah 10, we see he used the Assyrian armies as his tool against the destruction of Jerusalem. And so I want to go right now to Matthew chapter 26 and read from verse 62, where Jesus Christ had been incarcerated, ready to be crucified, and was questioned by the high priest of Israel. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tellest whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of glory. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. When Jesus told that high priest that he would see the coming of himself, Jesus, in clouds of glory, he wasn't saying that the high priest would be dead 2,000 years, perhaps in a state of punishment and in the spirit world, see the future coming of Jesus in our future. Jesus said he would see the coming of the Lord. Was Jesus lying? No. Jesus did come in that man's day. Now, that phrase, coming with the clouds of glory, is a common Old Testament reference to God coming in judgment. It didn't mean he was physically coming in clouds. It was just a, an idiom used to understand the coming of God in judgment. And when Jesus Christ said he was coming in clouds of glory, the high priest knew he was claiming to be God. And that's why he rent his clothes and accused Jesus Christ of blasphemy. You see, coming in clouds is noted in 2 Samuel chapter 22. David is praying in this chapter, and he refers to God coming in clouds in anger and judgment. And as we read this chapter, let me see, uh, verse 7, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice. Out of his temple and my cry did enter into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations of heaven moved and shook, because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. Now, God was never manifested physically in the Old Testament in this kind of manner. David was writing poetically. Although David said he was seen, he physically wasn't seen. But it continues and says, He made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. So David didn't describe a visible physical appearance of God in the sky when he said he came with dark clouds and thick clouds. It was a metaphor speaking of coming in judgment and anger. And that was used by Jesus Christ, and the high priest knew exactly what Jesus was using. He understood what those verses meant, that Jesus was claiming to be God. Well, in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said another series of words that refer to his coming that already were fulfilled in the first century. The very last verse of Matthew 16 says, Verily I say unto you, there is to be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Jesus said, Some of you won't die before I come. Now, unless somebody is over 2,000 years old, that prophecy had to have been fulfilled in the first century sometime. The people listening to him were in the world 2,000 years ago. And before they would die, they would see him coming. 
Now, some say if we keep on reading to Matthew chapter 17, that his coming was actually referring to the transfiguration on the mountain in the next chapter. And listen to what it says. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment as white as the light. Now, if Jesus was referring to his coming as this event of the transfiguration, why did this occur only six days after he said that? And why did Jesus say some of them there wouldn't die before this occurs? It was only six days after. If he was talking about that transfiguration as his coming, which wasn't a coming at all, then some of them had to have been so old that they would die any day and Jesus had to reassure them, you'll be around another week. Or else they had to be so sick that they wouldn't last very long and they knew it and he had to reassure them, you'll be around for another week. No, that's ridiculous. Jesus was talking about his coming in destruction upon the city of Jerusalem. And so, let's look at some other scriptures. In Matthew chapter 10, he makes another similar statement that does not refer to the future coming of Jesus from our viewpoint. Uh, chapter 10, verse 23, But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. And somebody said he was just referring to meeting up with them later on. and So, no, he was referring to the coming of the Son of Man. And Jesus says, they wouldn't have gone over all the cities of Israel till the Son of Man had come. And by A.D. 70, this is exactly what happened. He came in destruction. It was so close to that time after which he spoke. And in Luke chapter 23, we see another set of verses which speaks very similarly. Verse 27. Luke 23 and 27. <clears throat> Jesus was on his way to the cross, being crucified. Uh, he had the cross on his back. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem. Notice whom he, who he is addressing. Daughters of Jerusalem. Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear, and paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. Jesus said, You women and your children, you're going to cry out. Mountains cover us. Rocks fall on us. So don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves. What is very fascinating about this is that the mountains and the rocks being told to cover people is found in the sixth seal in Revelation chapter 6. And we read the last few verses of chapter 6. Let's begin at verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? This is exactly what Jesus told the women and their children that they would be experiencing and crying out for the mountains and rocks to do. Fall on them and hide them. In Luke 23, verses 27 to 30, Jesus explained and interpreted who it would be and in what day it would occur when the sixth seal of Revelation would be fulfilled. Well, let's continue our studies and stay tuned for the next video on end time Bible prophecy. God bless you.